This is a question 2 of practical 5 where you will need to do some calculation related to oscillation in time. So you have two springs, they're going to go oscillating up and down and we have this equation given to us. Now some things to be very careful is to note, to read instructions very carefully so that you minimize confusion later. So here the stopwatch is used to measure time, this thing is going to go up and down for 10 oscillations. So the small capital, the small letter T is 10 oscillations. The measurement of T is repeated and average big T is determined. Mm. Big T is for one oscillation. Ah. So here they give you a, a, a whole equation. T equals to 2 pi m q over root k. A graph of, now this is another thing important, log T against log m is plotted. Why do you choose log T over log m? So that it's linear. So you have to go and linearize this equation now to find the gradient and intercept. Let's do it. So if you need log t, uh, t is here, okay, where is m? m is here, but there's a power q there. Can we not deal with the q? I think we'll need to take the log of some values here. So if we, do, if we want to plot a log against log, then the first step is to take log of both sides. So we're going to do log t. That's all. Okay, on the right side, we log the whole thing. Log 2 pi m to the power of q over root k. Now, the only variable that we want to take out of this log or separate from the rest is the m if possible. So we need to think of log rules to break apart the log. The very first log rule is if there are things multiplied together, you can add them. So I'm going to take out the log m to the power of q. Multiply by everything else, right? So I just put there log 2 pi over root k. You see what I did there? I separated out because 2 pi multiplied by m, so I can kind of add it. Oh, don't forget the power also. And from here, I think there's one more rule that I want to do to separate out the m. Is it possible to get the q away from the m? Yes, it is possible. We are going to use the power rule. And that is this, this little q can be multiplied or taken out of the log. So q multiplied by log m plus log 2 pi over root k and this will be log t. Now we are in the form of a straight line equation. So now you can recognize that here is our y-axis, right? Our x-axis is log m because we want to plot log m. That's what they asked us to do. So this is our x. Everything else that is constant and behind here is all intercept. So this y equals mx plus c. What is stuck to x? m. Gradient. So this is gradient. So right here, gradient is q. y intercept is log 2 pi over root k. If you get all this correct, you have one mark. Let's move on. So now we come to the table section. Eh, there's so many values. Okay, you remember what t is? Uh? t is for 10 oscillations, right? 10 oscillations. So when you have big T over here, this is for one oscillation. Period, ma. Okay, so you want to calculate that value. You need to find the average. They should really put another column. Anyway, so 15.2 plus 16 divided by 2. That's the average. But that's for 10 oscillation. So you need to divide by 10. So I guess you could just put multiply by 10 like that. Okay. So remember, find first step, find average, and then divide by 10, because this is one oscillation that we want, whereas they gave us 10 oscillations. So if you press everything, I already kind of calculated the table. If you have not, pause the video, go try, calculate it out first. Okay, so I'm going to rub off this working here. So find average, T average, divide by 10, and you will get all these values. So here will be 1.56, 1.79, 1.97, 2.14, 2.14, and 2.45. How do you know how many SF to choose? You can kind of check um, your average value of T should be about 3 SF because all these are all 3 SF, 3 SF. So hence you can follow 3 SF as well for this one here. All of these are 3 SF so all of these also 3SF. The next thing is, how do you calculate the uncertainty of T? 
There are a few ways to do this. The easier way is to stick to our good old equation, half the range. So generally, you can say uncertainty of t is half the range of t. So t max minus t min. How are we going to do that? Let's do the example with the first one. So for this first one, plus minus, t max is what? Ah? t max will be 15.2 plus 16. What's the average? <sighs> Time to calculate. 15.2 uh sorry sorry t max is 16. oh so we just take 16 minus 15.2 but don't forget these are 10 oscillations so we need to get rid of that first so this will give us 0 0.04 okay see what we did there we took the maximum value which is 16. oh don't forget to divide by 10 Okay, if you want to find big T, minus the minimum value and find half the range. This method can be applied generally for all kinds of equations, all kinds of data. You just find the maximum value minus the minimum, divide by, by 2. That's half the range method. This is the range, is half. So you do that same calculation for everything, you will realize that they're all actually 0 0.04. So CIE is making our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to write here first 0 0.04. Okay, that's how you can find the uncertainty. Uh, is there another way to do it? Hmm, let's think about it and see. You could come up with an equation of your own that says t is uh, whatever you have for average value of t divided by 10 and propagate the uncertainty. But you need to, problem is you need to find the uncertainty of t because then you have to do delta t over t equals to delta t over t and uh, it's an extra work lah because you need to find delta t we don't know that so not recommended stick to half the range the basic one then we go on to calculate the log value now this log value is given but you need to find log t so let's do the value of log first on the calculator you need to press log of 1.56 and that will be 0 0.193 now be careful here is 3sf right one, two, three. For special log calculations, you follow your DP, follow the SF. So if here is 3 SF, that means my values here will be 3 DP. Oh, be careful. This is SF, this is DP, and this is only for log values. So 3 DP, one, two, three. Okay, correct. Everything is 3 SF, right? Okay, so everything 3 DP. So press more calculator, you should get 253. I wrote down all the others. 0 0.294, 0 0.330, 364, and the last one, 389. And then, don't forget to include the uncertainty as well. For log, you can also do half the range of t again, but I'm going to show you a different method which you can also use instead of half the range of largest log t minus minimum log t. So I'll write that out first. Lah. Delta log t. You can stick to our good old half the range of log t max minus log of the minimum t. That's one method. Method number two, which I recommend is shorter, is to memorize the formula for uncertainty in log. You can derive this. So this one is log t equals to 1 over ln of the base. Log is base 10, so we just write here 10. Okay, if this is base 10, we write 10 times the uncertainty in t over t. Now this one, two methods. Ah. You can either choose method 1 or method 2. Recommend if you know how to do both. Even better. Why not? Okay, let's do all this calculation for log and ln. You slowly go and press calculator. Lah, okay, You will get a value of 0 0.011. Okay, how do you get this? Well, I'll show you an example. This one for the first one, let's write in green. This will be 1 over ln 10 times, what's our delta t? Ah, this is t and delta t. So that will be 0 0.04 over 1.56, so on and so forth. Okay, if you get everything, you should write 0 0.010. This one is 0 0.09, it's getting smaller and smaller. 
0.008 and the last one 0.007. One question that we always get is, how do you know how many dp to put in for your uncertainty? Great question. My first hint is, usually what I'll do is, the first thing I do, I check the axis of the graph. So kind of, hey, hey, I already draw the graph. So for the vertical axis, the question that you need to ask yourself is, for one tiny box on the graph, like from here, ooh, from here to here, one small box is 0 0.002. That's about 3 dp. And on graphs, you kind of follow dp lah. Because everywhere you plot the graph is the same, right? So graph can go as small as 0 0.002. So we can keep that in mind. Okay, 3 dp. So check the graph. And number two, it is nice if your, your uncertainty can follow your value. Where's my graph? Ah. So the the value here is 3 dp, right? Here also 3 dp. So it's very nice. 3 dp looks sounds good. Not only it follows the value, it also suits, suits the graph. It's suitable to be plotted on the graph. So that's how you can check check these two things. Plus minus 1 is okay. All right, so if I, if I put 0 0.01, it's fine too if I want to do that. So usually in mask games, they will tell you what they are looking for. So be sure to check that. So in this case... Here you have t values and all the accepted decimal place of log t. So here is can be 3 dp or 1 extra, which is 4 dp. dp follow sf, remember, for this one. Uncertainty is all for t is 0 0.04. Uncertainty in log t can be from 0 0.011 to 0 0.007. So you notice they didn't put 0 0.01, right? Because if it's 0 0.01, your graph can plot 3 dp. Eh? So best to keep graph 3 dp and nice thing is it follows the values so that is how you can check your answer for the table using your table points you can plot on graph which i already did to save some time and it's very hard to plot on the computer i tell you so this is how the graph will generally look like things you need to note is plot point number one plot error bars so if your point here says 0 0.193 plus minus 0 0.011. Let's look for that point. Where is 0 0.193? I think it's this one. There we go. So that's really big. This point here is 0 0.193 plus minus 0 0.011. So one box is going to be 0 .0, 0 0.002, right? So 0 0.011, I have to either round up or round down. Got a problem here. Because I can't I cannot do odd numbers. It's all 0 0.02. So here what you could do is one eight. You could choose to either round up or round down, it doesn't really matter. I personally prefer to round up. So this one I round up to 0 0.012. So here will be 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12. So this is 0 0.012. Plus 0 0.012. In the other direction, I will minus 0 0.012 and go down. You know why I run out of uncertainty? So that later, when I'm drawing my worst fit line, it's a bit easier to draw. So it really is up to you, but you can choose whether you want to round up or round down. So error bars need to be symmetrical. If you go up by 0 0.012, you need to go down by negative 0 0.012. And draw the lines straight with a ruler so you plot all the error bars and all your points you need to draw your best fit line number one best fit line generally should be balanced nice thing is in paper five they tell you what should your best fit line be so in mark scheme look for this sentence the line should pass between 2.22 and this one that's one that's what we call gates and the upper line, the other part, should pass through between the other gate. There's two gates usually, here and here. So you must pass through these two points. So I recommend if you're practicing paper 5, every time you draw a graph, also mark out the gates. So these are what we call the gates given by the mark scheme. If your best fit line goes between 
these two gates, you can put this dots or marker whenever you mark your work, then your best fit line is okay. So there's one up here. We go down. There's one more down here. So best fit line. The better, the more your line goes through in the middle, the better your best fit line is. Worst fit line is another mark. How do you draw worst fit line? Generally, worst fit line, you can either draw steepest or shallowest. So assume you have some points that look like this. Lah, huh? Uncertainty here, one. Here is one. And I guess here is one. So your best fit line, I will try to draw best fit line. Best fit line, can we put green color? I can, uh, best slip line green. Okay, it's attempt. One note sometimes doesn't work with me, so I get uh, like this. Okay, let's say your best fit line is this. I'm just going to leave it as that. Best fit line. So you have your error bars. And if you want to draw a worst fit line, you have to choose whether you want to draw the steepest or the shallowest. Let's say I want to draw the steepest. So I will look at... Let's make this as big as we can. To make the steepest worst fit line, you connect this bottom of the error bar to the top of the last point, like this. Okay, so this is what we call the steepest worst fit line. You can choose to do that. You must make sure that this worst fit line pass through every single error bar, the stem of every single error bar. So this part is called the stem. Okay. So your worst fit line, whatever you draw, as steep as you can, but you must make sure you pass through this highlighted stem of the error bar. This one. Okay. And if you want to draw the shallowest worst fit line, I'm going to use orange color for that. You can start from the first point. Just make it as shallow as you can. Ma. So you start from here, as high as you can go, and connect to the lowest possible value. Oh no, it ran a bit. Can I get it to behave? Yes. Okay, there we go. So now I have my green color best fit line. I make it as, sh as shallow as I can. So this is called the shallowest worst fit line that is possible. That passes through every single error bars. Masking will talk about shallowest and steepest. You choose one, you draw. Lah. Okay, next. So I chose in this example to draw... The steepest worst fit line, see, is connected to the top, connected down to the bottom of the first point. If you are satisfied, it passes through every single error bar. Looks correct, right? Yeah, I can. You must then find your gradient values. So if you look at this whole graph, there is a gradient triangle that must be drawn. Dotted line, like this, okay, and then connect to here. So you have to draw that in order to get your gradient mark. And it's good also, good practice to write down your points that you are using for your gradient, which is good for you to check and good for examiner to check as well. So pick two points for your best fit line, two points for your worst fit line, and go find your gradient. So I'm going to demo one possible way you can write out your answer for best fit line uh, gradient. So the first one is best fit line, M best. This one, delta, delta Y, delta X, right? Delta log T over log. So, oh, this is log T. One note, log T, although there's an S here, has no unit. Like this value, 0 0.36, has no unit. Because it is inside the log, we don't write the unit. Only if you open the log, you need to write unit. Let's check the unit for down here. Also log, so no unit. The value, 2.7, for example, has no unit. Not grams, ah, no unit. So you don't have to write units in your gradient. Yay. Let's write it out. So delta y over delta x. Ah. No need to write. Lah. Ah, yeah, this one you can do already. So my values I chose was 0 0.380 minus 0 0.214. Notice how I write out all the decimal places that I can read from my graph's smallest box. And then from here, I can calculate. I guess I could write one more step. 166 over 0 0.36. And I will write my final gradient of 0 0.461. A, a, a not so strict rule of thumb is that, you see, oh, once I minus, I get this value. This one is 3SF. This one is 2SF. So my final answer, I can choose to be 2 to 4SF actually. It's okay. Up to me what I want to choose. As long as I follow the least of my calculated value, it's fine. So do the same thing for the worst fit line. This will be 
two points from my worst fit line. So I got 0 0.388 minus 0 0.210 divided by 2.59 minus 2.24 and that will give me 0 0.187 over 0 0.35 which is a gradient of 0 0.509. Looks nice. Don't forget to include the absolute uncertainty in your answer. So you need to find the difference between best and worst fit. Now, by the way, uh, this is this is finding half the range. Remember, to find uncertainty, we take half of the range. But what is the range? The range actually is the steepest minus the shallowest worst fit. So if you drew two lines, you can do steepest minus shallowest. Or the faster one and recommended one is to take half Hmm, do we need to half ah? Steepest minus shallow worst. Or you can just take best minus worst. Oh. Best minus worst. And absolute value. The recommended one is this one. Because you just minus only ma. Okay, if you're wondering why you can minus like that. Ah. Come on, I show you. You see, what is the range? The full range is the steepest to the oops, shallowest. So half the range will be from steepest to best fit line, no? Steepest to best fit line. This is half the range. But we don't we usually don't draw too many lines. It's just too much time, and you don't have enough time to do that. So the final thing is, once we minus everything, we should get a value of zero point zero four eight for my particular values here. So yours shouldn't be too far off. Mine is four six one plus minus zero point zero four eight. Okay, note. All this has no unit. Uh. No unit. Because it's all locked. Locked already or units got. A possible other way you could write is 0 0.46 plus minus 0 0.05. Maybe that's your answer. You should be somewhere there. Uh. Don't get too far away. Okay. Once you got everything from your graph, then they will ask you to do a bunch of calculations, which is in the last page. They always ask this one. Uncertainty, intercept, calculate. So if you do enough past year, you will kind of recognize the pattern now. Uh. So determine the y-intercept of best fit. Don't bother about uncertainty. Can we read y-intercept from here? Cannot. Firstly, because this 2.1 is not the origin. So we have to calculate the best fit, uh, sorry, the y-intercept with your favorite equation, y equals to mx plus c. But in our case, we want to find intercept. So c is y minus mx. You need to do this once for your best fit line. So you choose a point, uh, choose a point on your, your best fit line. I'll usually use the gradient point. So for example, if I'm using for my best fit, uh, 2.59 and 0 0.380 for my line, then I will sub in 0 0.380 minus the gradient, which is 0 0.461 my, times 2.59. That's my best fit. This will give me 0 0.814. Negative. Include also la, negative 0 0.814. You must clearly show your substitution. So write out what are you substituting, what equation. That's one mark. If your substitution is correct and you calculate correctly. Now if they do ask you to find uncertainty though, then you need to find the worst fit line. And then find the delta C, which is the best fit minus the worst fit. But we don't need to do that here. So... Nah, don't need it. Not needed. So using your answers that you found previously, determine the values of K and Q. Don't need to be worried with units. Do not include uncertainties. You know why too many lock? If there's lock, it's a bit hard to deal with units and uncertainties. So we're going to find K and Q. At this point, you will probably have to zoom back up to your very first part. Look at this one. Where is K? Where is Q? We need to find them. So K is related to the intercept. Q is related to the gradient. So you could choose to start with either one. So you rewrite what you did in the beginning here. It's generally always the same. Right? You have to use the equation in the beginning. So you need to write very, very clearly what you got in the beginning to show your clear substitution. So gradient equals to Q. Just rewrite law, I guess. Q will just write 0 0.461. That's number one. 
Number two, we need to find K. So you rewrite that your Y intercept is log 2 pi over root K. <sighs> we need to find K. We need to do some log things. Okay. To open up the log, we need to remember that this is log base 10. If they didn't write, they just write LG is log base 10. Lah. So 10 to the power of Y intercept will be equal to all the stuff inside the log, which is 2 pi over root k. Now we can find k. <sighs> okay. All right, so k here will be, if I rearrange, I skip the few steps, 10 to the power of y intercept square. Plug in all the values, I will get 2 pi over 10 to the power of u, write your y intercept, which is negative 0.814 squared. And with that, you will get a value of 1676.3 if you use my values. So I can round off to 3SF. I mean, my intercept is in 3SF, so I could probably do that if I want to, 1680. I can round off to 2SF as well, that's okay. So for this particular two marks, they want you to show very clearly what you substitute in. And additionally, your gradient must be 2 to 3 SF. That's two marks for this. So show your working. Uh. Please write the equation that you wrote in the beginning. Now the last part is always the pattern of this paper 5 things. They will ask you to use all the information you have calculated above and predict a new value. So if you want a period of 1, What's the mass you need? For this question, what you need to do is either rewrite your linearized equation. Where's my linearized? Uh, either write out this linearized equation down there or write the original equation here. There's two methods. I will show you both. So now we have all the information we need to predict another value of m. Method number one is to use the linearized equation. So from the beginning, we already linearized log t equals to q log m plus log 2 pi over k. And we've also identified that this is really the gradient times log m. Uh, how to write? Uh? I guess I could say gradient times log m plus the y-intercept. So you apply all your values. Oh. T is given. M we need to find. Gradient intercept we already know. So if you want to do this method, you have to plug in log of 1.0 equals to... What's my gradient? Ah? 0 0.461. So you write down what you got for your gradient times log M plus Y intercept, which is minus 0 0.814. Oh, it's a very long question. Okay, so rearrange press calculator. You will eventually arrive at log m equals to 1.76572, blah, 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 blah. Which will mean that m is 10 to the power of this number, 1.76572, blah, blah, blah. Use your calculator to keep more decimals and you will get 58.3 in grams because m we are following the table so check by the table what is the, the unit so this is one method method number two is to use the original equation so we write out the original equation that one will give us uh what is it already yeah uh? t t t t equals to 2 pi m q over root k so you rearrange all this will give you m q equals to t root k over 2 pi. And oh, how to deal with the m? Ah? Okay, this one is a bit tricky. Lah. You can use this method if you want to, but you need to do m equals to uh, root of q t root k over 2 pi. You so ugly one. If your calculator cannot deal with the root of q, then you can do similar t root k over 2 pi to the power of 1 over q. 
kind of a law of indices lah. So if you plug in your values calculate, you should get about 58 as well. So I'm not going to show the whole thing because not enough space, but plug in the values, calculate. So which do you prefer? Up to you. But I recommend that you know how to do both methods. In case you have time during an exam, you can try this method too. You can try that uh, other method one over there as well. And you can check your answer to see if you did something wrong or not. If they don't agree, then something is wrong somewhere. Especially when there's units and prefix. So anyway, I'm going to put 48. For this mark, they are looking for very clear substitution. Okay, correct substitution of your previous values. And they will show all the methods that you use. So if your gradient or intercept is wrong before, don't worry about it. As long as you substitute correctly, you will be okay. So that's all for this question. Nice, short and sweet. Lots of logs. And lots of new ways to calculate uncertainties. Hope that was helpful for you to understand better how Paper 5 works. So, but that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.